What dumb scam did you actually fall for? In high school I worked at a subway. I was at the cash register. Woman pays with two rolls of dimes. We were very busy so I threw them in the drawer until later. When I got a chance to do so I broke them open and they were full of pennies. You might ask why I didn't notice the size difference. Well it was all pennies except the ends and I wasn't paying attention. At McDonald's they never let us accept rolled coins without cracking them open and counting them. A friend came to Shanghai, China for a quick vacation. She was approached by a student who wanted to practice their English and went with them to a tea shop that forced her to pay exorbitantly for the tea. Something like $50 for the pot. She happily paid for the tea at the price they asked. She even bought some loose leaf tea from them before she left. When she saw me, she explained what a great experience it was. I guess I'll leave it up to you, the reader, to decide if she was scammed or not because I'm honestly unsure. If you leave delighted, is it really a scam? The best scams are the ones where the victim doesn't realize they have been scammed. My shame. In a hotel. The hotel phone rings at 630 am. I pick up. Lady says the payment system crashed and she needs my payment info again. In my sleepy logic free mind. I give her my credit card. Go downstairs to check out. They have no idea what I'm talking about the system crashing. What happened was, a scammer called up the hotel front desk and asked for a random room number, which happened to me mine and the desk transferred them to me. So, the hotel paid for my stay, was able to cancel card, they had only changed a hundred or so bucks to it and got it back from the bank. I'm usually very skeptical about things, but I fell for this one hard. You'll be amazed at how off guard you are when waking up like that. Brain is in a fog. When I first moved to the city I was meeting some friends for brunch, and I parked on this side street. Started walking toward the restaurant and this guy yelled after me AI, it's $5 to park here and I was like oh crap, I'm sorry I didn't know and then gave him the $5. Then at brunch I told my friends about it because I was like jeepers, your parking enforcement is really intense here and very intimidating and then that is when they told me that I was just scammed out of $5. Parking on those streets is free. I just gave $5 to a guy in a vest because he told me it was $5 and had a vest. My dad fell for that once in a parking lot downtown. It's funny how much trust a orange vest instills in you. I pulled into a target parking lot with my window down. I had literally just parked and this lady comes up to me to ask me to buy her a cab. Really just give her money for a cab because her boyfriend left her at Target. She didn't have any bags, and she said she didn't feel like walking. Whatever, an Uber would be cheap and I don't know if she is lying. So I ordered her an Uber. So I go in and get what I needed, and the lady hadn't gotten in the Uber yet. She said she would just rather have the cash. So I lied and said I don't carry cash, and she wouldn't even take the Uber. I had to cancel it after like 5 minutes so I got charged the fee. I wouldn't say you fell for it, you just called her bluff. I was at a music festival and bought a crappy local rapper's mixtape for $40 instead of $5. He finessed the heck out of me and I didn't even realize it until I was back at my tent. Still pee about it to this day, but at least I have his CD somewhere. Lebo Soprano, if you're out there, your 42 track mixtape full of 30 second songs is garbage. He's got an internet presence if you google him. He's even on Spotify. Oh wait what if you are Lebo Soprano and you're trying to get people to google your name and hear your music. Lebo. I was in Thailand and received an email receipt from Apple with a few hundred dollars worth of iTunes stuff on it. I freaked out and thought the Wi-Fi at the guest house was shady and someone had hacked my iTunes. So I clicked the little customer service link and typed in my Apple ID and password to log in. And then it hit me. I'm pretty sure that 15 years ago, a guy pulled that trick on me where they ask you for change and then quickly confuse you into thinking they gave you more money than they did. I'm ashamed of it to this day, and I'm not even sure that it happened. In fact, I'm pretty sure the draw counted right that day, but it just seems like that's what the guy was doing. I did one of those MLM door to door sales jobs for almost 6 months back in the early 2000s. I made a little money but realized it was BS but took me a while to find a real job to replace it. Not me, but my dad. 
he was in a car boot sale park, calls me and asks me if he should buy this laptop and iPhone for £250 and if it seems like a good deal. I thought it was too good to be true, but why not if it can be done? Plus they wouldn't f with my dad as he's sort of solid and tall. I should have known better. He calls me 2 hours later when he arrived home to tell me he was scammed and tricked into buying a backpack full of potatoes. What happened is that they showed him the stuff, in working order and proceeded by putting them into a backpack and then in the back of their car on the seat to receive and count the money. Then they took the backpack and gave it to him. They switched the bag right in front of his eyes but did not notice it until he got back to his car and checked them. When he went back, they were already gone. I was pee off because out of frustration he threw the backpack away, including the potatoes. I was looking at some, uh, dodgy websites, when I got this pop up this iPad has been found to contain child pornography. The police will arrive in 24 hours unless you pay this bill. Now, I've never been anywhere near child pornography, but it was a less well known pee site the pop up came from. And I was quite young and naive at the time, so I believed this to be true. I couldn't pay because then my parents would know something was fishy, and if the police arrived, well, I'd have to confess to watching P, even if it wasn't children, which would again cause my parents. So I spent the next 24 hours crapping myself, but to my relief no one came. I later did an internet search and found this was a pretty common scam. Still scared the heck out of 15 year old me though. This was a couple of years ago now. I lived near a gas station so I was walking home one day and a block or so away from the gas station an older lady comes up to me and asks for 10 bucks because she filled her gas tank up but forgot her wallet at home. In Canada they allow to pump before paying. I didn't have any money on me at the time so I rushed home to get money for her. On the way back I noticed she didn't even have a car. At this point someone nearby stopped me and told me they had seen me talking to her and that she does this all the time. My cynicism towards humanity grew a few levels that day. I just wanted to help out. That sounds like the most Canadian thing to do. Run home and get money to help. When I lived in DC a guy approached me in a parking lot asking if I wanted to buy a camcorder. He showed me the bag and it did look like a camcorder so he asked for $90 I think I bought it for like $50 so when I got home I opened it up. What it was happened to be a regular film camera that also played cassette tapes and had a small tree pod. I remember not being mad so much I got screwed over more like why the FCK would a company make a camera that plays tapes. It was summer. I had quit my job in the middle of the college school year because I hated it and had a near maxed out credit card with jobs hard to come by. A bit desperate, tried to join a website to get people jobs pet house babysitting. I put in information for pet sitting. A couple days later get an email about someone in Australia getting ready to move to my area and something something about their dogs getting there first. I don't remember the details. Multiple messages were traded until around midnight. Sitting on my bed with a laptop in my aunt's basement I get this sinking feeling and google pet sitting scams. I found dang near an identical script to the messages I'd been receiving. At the very least, I caught onto the scam before I'd lost anything more than an hour or two's time. I have to actually. When I was in middle school I went on the internet in the library and got one of those pop up here the 1,231,233 visitor enter your email to claim your reward I told everyone I that I was going to get money I was bringing in best. Buy and circuit city flyers to study hall and would spend the whole time picking out the video games I would buy. People would ask me in class hey did yo get your money yet? I would always tell them I am getting it in a couple weeks. Eventually the cringe set in and I looked like a moron. The other one was when I was 15 and using AOL messenger and met some guy who told me he was PJ lad, pro skateboarder. I believed him. He kept this charade up for a while and even called me and told me he would send me a skateboard in the mail. And once again I told everyone in school. The cringe set in when the guy told me sorry and that it wasn't true. Yep. The good thing is you didn't lose anything of value. Besides pride, of course, but that comes cheap. Paid subscription to an online dating site. Absolutely nobody freaking pays for it so you'll end up being the only paying customer. Getting messages from bots. I got roped into listening to a spiel for Primerica when I was first looking for a job. Luckily that was the extent of it. 
Oh man. I went to one of these with my wife. Noped out at the lunch break. Holy cow. A friend talked to me seem very desperate. Tells me that he lost his Venmo account and how he needs money to pay his rent and no way to receive it. I didn't think of it at the time because we are both international students and I was like maybe he isn't fully settled. I was just like sure I'll help. Next thing I know, my Venmo account got banned and it's because he didn't need money for rent he was doing some fraud crap but I don't know the detail. When I think about it now I'm like was I really that stupid but oh well. Some people are too liberal with their use of the word friend. Freecreditscore.com I was trying to show my then girlfriend that I had a better credit score than her. Didn't know it was $25 more until $200 later. Creditkarma.com my friend. Years ago I worked as a cashier and one day a costumer paid normally for the product and while I was counting the money he said, let me hold that, pointing his head to the money, and I gave him a $100 bill. Thanks you too. Have a nice day only noticed minutes later. I still don't know if he pulled out a hypnosis thing on me. Really desperate to find a job. Got an email about being a personal assistant to an art dealer. He said that he would send me a check and I would put it in my bank account and now typing it out. I realized I should have stopped it right there but desperation hits you. I had made a schedule and a financial spreadsheet. I was that grateful. Anyway, I got the check and used the camera tool to load it to my account. This was insufficient. He needed the money ASAP. Using my last $5, I took an Uber to the bank. I had to walk home with a hurt knee, unrelated, in the cold. I did more research and discovered it was a scam. I cried because these people prey on desperation. And thank goodness I had used the last of money so he got nothing. Somewhere further down the thread there's probably some guy going. So I'm an art dealer and I hired this guy who needed some cash to be my assistant. I sold a netbook to a Nigerian posing as an Australian teacher, who was teaching in Nigeria, which should have tipped me off. Cutco Vector was enticed by the $18 HR summer job letter I got in the mail. Went to an interview that turned into a sales pitch. I got really confused. They had us all fill out a form and one of the questions was something along the lines of is Vector the place for you? I wrote no, and in the one on one they were really confused, like why did I stay there only to tell them no thanks? I don't know either, guess I just wanted to waste their time too. Me and a friend once took the Scientology personality test just to see what it was about and ultimately waste their time. Monavi, young, fresh out of high school, naive me wanted to make some extra cash, never heard of an MLM before, signed up through a friend, made her reimburse me for most of the money I had to shell out and lost a friend, glad I learned about it then though, when it works and those raps and tees became a rage a few years back I sat back and watched a dozen or so former classmates fall for the scam. I avoided one today, selling a notebook online, contacted with a story about how her daughter lost her debit card buying groceries and she only had checks, I suggested a teller withdraw, can't get to the bank until weekend, I suggested Venmo, conversation ended, found the person through Facebook and googled her and her city, 2015 arrest for check forgery. Computer popped up with a virus warning and a very legit looking name and number to call. I was a bit behind the times technologically speaking, so I just assumed it was legit since I was on Google Chrome at the time. I called the number and paid $50 for updated virus security software and all was well. I only realized I'd gotten fricked when the same thing happened again a few weeks later. I'm lucky they only got me for that first $50 instead of wiping out my entire account after that. Sorry, we need another $50 to activate the antivirus. Runescape, 9 years old, I just started and this guy tells me something about dueling him. He takes me to the wilderness, says to attack him first to see the damage. I do, I die, I lose everything. Like 200 gold value but still, the guy spent like 20 minutes for that lol. In the game Runescape. There is this small room with an altar that has a jug of wine resting on it. As a 9 year old kid, I was told by some random players that if I take it I could sell it for a lot of in game gold and such. 
The moment I take it, said players lock the room and a bunch of NPCs begin to attack me and I eventually die, allowing other players to loot all my stuff. I never played RuneScape ever again. I'm pretty young, and when I was 10, I was really obsessed with this mobile game, Dragon Veil. I loved watching my dragons grow and if I do say so myself my park was pretty dang good, and I had collected about half of the super rare dragons at the time. One day I decided that I wanted to get some of the in-game currency that let you buy special dragons, but I didn't want to pay. I searched around on Safari for a while looking for a way to achieve my ultimate scam but found that most of the sites I visited required doing a survey which I didn't feel like wasting my time on. Eventually, I stumbled upon a post on somebody's blog stating that they had found a way to get the in-game currency for free, and to email them with an address included. I followed up, immediately sending an email and eagerly refreshing the page every few minutes, anticipation for my brand spanking new park building. The email came. All I had to do was send him the email and password for my Apple account. Now that sure sounded easy to me, and I didn't see what could go wrong. So I sent the email and password, and told him to please not take my stuff, as I was only 11, and I would love some new stuff for my park. A few days passed with nothing new happening on Dragon Vale, and I felt a deep disappointment, but on the fourth day, I'll be damned, about 3500 gems popped up in my account. I was ecstatic. And in retrospect I have no dang idea how or why it actually worked, but I wasn't complaining then, and I sure as heck aren't complaining now. I bet they planned on scamming you but felt bad for the small child so they just bought you some with their scam money. I was at a gas station in Florida and a guy was outside begging for money because his son was sick and he needed gas to get to the hospital. He kept talking and I was like, whatever, here's five dollars, fine. I get in my car, start driving, the hospital is next to the gas station, like right there. This made me laugh so hard. Iraqi, sorry, I said Iranian before, dinar. I spent 250 pounds on 500,000 dinar when Saddam was toppled, being told that it would rebound within a few weeks months and we'd all be millionaires. After buying it I found out just how much of the stuff had been sold outside of Iraq, which meant the second a ton of people sold it, the price would crumble. Also, resellers offered to exchange once the price rose, with a 40% markup. That was the point I realized it wasn't as it seemed. Too late for my mate, who had told me about it in the first place, who invested his savings, 10 pounds K, into Iraqi dinar. I still have it, because you never know, but I just wrote it off as a bad investment and moved on. It's worth about 302 pounds right now. A few years ago I had my first iPhone. I ran across a trustworthy looking article describing easter eggs in the operating system, one of them being if you set the date to something like 1990 and restarted it, it would unlock a secret, retro mode, brick the phone. It unlocked a retro mode for sure, the time before you had a smartphone. I was in Delhi and was walking with my backpack and my lonely planet in my hands. When a guy approached me and asked me what I was looking for, as I had just arrived in Delhi I was an easy target so I responded that I looked for the tourist office. His face changed and responded that a fire had burned it to the ground, but that he could show me the way to the new tourist office. I agreed and we rented a tuk tuk and drove to the new tourist office. After 15 minutes or so a small shack with a banner saying official tourist office emerged. It did not look official, but I complied and entered the building. The inside was covered with pictures of major landmarks on pieces of A4 paper and the general vibe was just dodgy, so I said to my guide that I wanted to go back. He nodded and after another 15 minutes driving he drove to a new building with a similar banner official tourist office. That's when I started to doubt whether they really were official tourist offices. Walking around with Lonely Planet in your hands pretty much sets you up as a target. This actually happened recently. I put up a listing on a pet sitting website as an available pet sitter and got a response from a woman about a week later. She said she was moving to my area in the next two weeks, needed a dog sitter and suggested very good pay. I thought it was a really sweet deal, considering I'd only be doing this for a couple months before going back to school. She said that because she's moving, she needed help paying her furniture salesman and interior decorator. 
Said she was gonna send cashier checks and I had to deposit them, withdraw the money and money gram the cash to both of them. I asked why she couldn't just transfer money to them online and she said she needed to gain the trust of someone who's gonna be in her house and around her dog. It seemed a little fishy but I brushed it off, deposited the check, withdrew the cash and sent the money. I get an email from my bank the next day saying the check didn't go through and that it was fraudulent. B stole $2,650 from me. It's stupid as frick and looking back at it now, I can't believe that I actually fell for it. Back in the 90s, I saw a magazine ad that said, Master Key, opens any lock. I sent my $20 and waited. Weeks later, I got a tiny Allen wrench taped to a piece of paper with lock picking instructions. About 15 years ago I shipped a monitor I had sold on eBay to an unregistered address messaged to me by the high bidder. The address was in Russia. A week later the payment I had initially received was revoked, and I was out $250. I used to sell things on eBay from time to time, usually pretty inexpensive stuff that I was just trying to get rid of. But every time I sold an old mobile phone I'd specifically say US buyers only and I'd still get about a dozen emails asking if I'd reconsider and ship to one of a variety of former Soviet republics. I imagine they were all scammers but I wasn't going to risk it. When I was younger, I was really into martial arts. I saw the Bruce Lee biopic, the one with Jason Scott Lee. There was one scene where he had electrodes attached to his chest and said something like, it's like doing 200 push-ups in a minute, or whatever. I was like, well not long after that, I bought a similar product off an infomercial. Total scam. I think they might have actually been sued for it, too. Probably could have gotten my money back if I signed on to the class action suit. As a teenager, I was working alone in a small store. Some guy came in and brought about $9 worth of stuff to the counter. He went into his wallet and then said something like, Crap. I'm sorry man. I have to put this stuff back. I only have a $100 bill. I looked at the cash in the drawer and said, it's fine. We can break that for you. Later that day, the owner of the store took me aside and showed me how I had taken a counterfeit C note and given the guy back $91 in actual real money. As I looked at it closer, I realized it wasn't even a good counterfeit. The printing was blurry and the bill itself wasn't even physically the right size. The store owner was very cool about it and didn't chew me out or anything, but fuck I felt stupid. I used to play an unofficial online Pokemon game. Someone told me that they'd trade me an EV if I changed my account's recovery email to their email. OFC my dumbass did it. The money changing scam while I was a teenager working at Ponderosa. My boss was very understanding though and they caught the guy from surveillance footage. A wizard in a parking lot told me that if I rubbed Craxy on my penis and balls that the next woman I banged would fall in love with me but I just ended up masturbating in my car till the sun came up. I just ended up masturbating in my car till the sun came up. We've all been there. Was approached by a stranger at community college looking for help. Said they needed someone to cash a check for them since there was a hold, or something can't recall exact details, on their account. Went over to the bank with him. His sister was waiting and handed me a check which I attempted to cash for them. At which point the teller has another employee pull me aside into a different room to ask me what was going on. Quickly deduces I was being scammed and told me. Points to the two who by now out of the parking lot making their leave. The one time I was quite pleased with Boa's service. To be clear, the scam was that the check was going to bounce and pull money from my account. My husband had recently been talking about doing something with Publishers Clearinghouse. I can't remember what exactly, so when I got a call that we had one and they were on their way to our house, I barely questioned it. If I hadn't been too poor to pay the taxes and gone to talk to my mother-in-law about it, I probably would have fallen for it. I used to be a head teller at a bank, and we never deposited a Publishers Clearinghouse check without putting a hold on it, to give it time to come back. I never did see a legit one of those. Ghostreservations.com They make their site look just like Marriott's and then pay for ads on Google. Who thought I made a reservation direct with Marriott, but when it came time to make a change to the dates, it was a brutal experience. Frick those guys, crap like that should be illegal and actively enforced. 
quick change scam while working as a cashier. Guy came in and bought like $12 worth of stuff. Started off by giving me $100. I was giving him change when he decided to pay me with a $20 instead. Then changed his mind again. And then again. He kept doing it so fast I got flustered and by the end he had changed from the $100 and the $20 walking out with like $88 of the store's money. As soon as he left I realized what he did. I should have slowed everything down but I got caught up in the moment and let him confuse me. I paid a guy $100 to take his broken dishwasher to the dump. I thought I was buying a used working dishwasher. I took him at his word. Got it home. Installed it and it wouldn't run. It only had lights on the front that lit up. But nothing else worked. I did open it up to take a look at the circuit board and could see where a circuit had burned through. As I was taking it out to put in the new dishwasher I'd bought. I could see where the insulation blanket had pushed into the heating element and melted a hole it in and from there I assume it had shorted something that caused that circuit board to burn through. I was too embarrassed and didn't want to spend the time to go back and call him out for it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.